today is a special Sunday. Um, I'm just facilitating some parts of it. But we call it, He's calling you. He's calling all of us to do something. And He's called all of us to build better in NCC. Amen, everyone? So over, we've got some scripture reading ready, we've got some reflection ready, and Elizabeth will read the first scripture for us. Okay, good morning. Uh, I will be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. I'm reading from New Century Version, NCV. A person's body is one thing but it has many parts. Though there are many parts to a body, all those parts make only one body. Christ is like that also. Some of us are Jews and some are Greeks. Some of us are slaves and some are free. But we were all baptized into one body through one spirit. And we were all made to share in the one spirit. The human body has many parts. The foot might say, because I'm not a hand, I'm not part of the body. But saying this would not stop the foot from being a part of the body. The ear might say, because I'm not an eye, I'm not part of the body. But saying this would not stop the ear from being a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, it would not be able to hear. If the whole body were an ear, it would not be able to smell. If each part of the body were the same part, that would be no body. But truly, God put all the parts, each one of them, in the body as he wanted them. So then, there are many parts, but only one body. The eyes cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the foot, I don't need you. No, those parts of the body that seems to be weaker are really necessary. And the parts of the body we think are less deserving are the parts to which we give the most honor. We give special respect to the parts we want to hide. The more respectable parts of our body need no special care. But God put the body together and gave more honor to the parts that need it. So, our, word, our body would not be divided. God wanted the driven parts to care the same for each other. If one part of the body suffers, all the other parts suffer with it. Or if one part of our body is honoured, all the other parts share its honour. Together, you are the body of Christ, and each one of us is a part of the body. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth, for putting another brick on the wall. What an amazing passage about what the church is and to help us to understand what God's heart is for his church. I think when we read that passage, I saw three lessons that we can learn from this amazing portion of scripture. And the first is this. If you go back to uh, verse 27 there, we saw the church is the body of Christ. Now, the church is not just anybody. It's not my body. It's not a pastor's body. It's not an organization's body. Verse 27, that last verse in that passage we read, and it's in your handout for those of you who want to refer to it, is the church is the body of Christ. Of Christ. It's Jesus' body. So this means that whenever we think about the church, we must allow Jesus himself to define, to shape, and to correct our thoughts and understandings and our beliefs about church. I'm sure all of us have opinions about church. I do, and it's only natural that we have opinions. We're only human. But we must always allow Jesus, through his scripture, to have the final say. And what does that mean? Well, we also have experiences that uh, color our understanding about church, but also affect how we feel about people and relate to people in church. 
I grew up in the church from the time I was a baby in the cradle. My parents ran a Sunday school in our home. So every Saturday I was used to helping my parents put the chairs in, front of, in, in my own house. And kids from all over the neighborhood would come to Sunday school and have Sunday school in our house. And I grew up in church and at one point in my teenage life, I had an, I had an experience with someone. And it was a horrible experience. And I thought, you know, this person is so mean to me. And I came to the conclusion, church must be a bad place. I felt like giving up on church. And I would come on Sundays, and I would sit there, and I would feel really bad, and I feel like a hypocrite for singing songs about Jesus and feeling the way I did. But you know, God was so good to me. God sent His grace into my life and He put people into my life that helped me stay connected to church. And you know what? Over time, God healed those hurts and He showed me how to think a little bit differently and to eventually feel differently about church. He showed me that hurt people often hurt others because they are hurt too. And He showed me that I'm not perfect I hurt others too, and you know what? We all need grace and forgiveness from one another. But one really important thing God also showed me is that the church is the body of Christ. And if the church is the body of Christ, then I come to church for Christ. I come because I belong to Him. I belong to His body. Now, I don't mean that I come to church because I come to a a building or to a service. It could involve that, but what I mean is that I come to church when I belong to Christ, I belong to his spiritual family. We don't have just our biological families. We have this wonderful spiritual family that Jesus has brought us into because he died for us, he saved us, and he brought us into new life with him. And so, yes, coming to church may mean coming to the service, but it could also mean meeting in connect groups, coming for our family day next week, meeting uh, with fellow believers over lunch. But I come to church not because of a nice experience. I come to church because, not because pastor or because my parents drove me to church. I come because I belong to Jesus. Amen? Amen. So I just want to invite all of us today and over the next few weeks as we think about church, to just bring whatever thoughts and opinions, experiences that we have had, good and bad, about church, or with about people in church, and lay them all before our Lord Jesus. And let's just ask Him, Lord, thank you for saving me and bringing me into your family, the church. Help me to see church the way you want me to see it. Not about how I've lived in the past with my experiences. Help me to stay connected to your body so that I can become more closely connected to you, to grow deeper in love with you, to experience your love, and to connect with others. The second thing we learn in this passage is that the church, as we read, is many parts, but one body. If you go to verse 13, and we go back to that slide on verse 13, we'll read there, some of us are Jews and some of us are Greeks. So, what does that say? We come from different backgrounds, right? We have different strengths, weaknesses. We come from different cultures, work experiences. So we must expect differences in church. Don't expect the person sitting next to you to be exactly the same as you. Even people in our own family are not exactly the same as us. And we know that too well. Well, differences aren't a bad thing. Verse 19 says, in verse 19, God has a purpose for our differences. The verse says, God put all the parts, each one of them, in the body, and listen to these words, as he wanted to. Let me read that again. God put all the parts, each of them, in the body as he wanted to. So just because I'm different from so and so doesn't mean I have no importance or value in church or that I don't belong. Just because I think I, I'm not important doesn't mean that I'm not important. My beliefs don't dictate the truth. 
At the end of the day, it's God's word that has the final say. So, God put our friends there, the Bahasa group in church, because he wanted to. God put teachers, musicians, people with all kinds of different skills in church because he wanted to. Church, each one of us matters to God. Have you ever thought that God brought you here today because he wanted you? So let's today stop saying, you know, God wants him and her to connect more in church, but not me. Can we all say together, Lord, thank you for wanting me. Can we just change that thought in our minds and begin to believe that God loves us and wants us? And show me, Lord, how to embrace your purpose for me in church. So church is the body of Christ. It has many parts, but one body. And the third thought I had was that church is here and God has a purpose for us. He's got a plan on how we should be united. God wants us to be united, not divided. Now, we should never think about anybody in church as you're not important or I don't need you. Now, we don't say such horrible things to each other, right? But we might think it or feel it. Well, unity matters to God, so it should matter to us. Verse 25 in that passage says, God wanted the different parts to care for the same for each other. God wanted it. And unity is built by caring. How do we care? We care for, by sharing each other's um, burdens and pains. We express it by praying for one another. We care by uh, celebrating each other's joys when we get... Um, promotion, when we do well in our exams, we celebrate birthdays, anniversaries, we celebrate our joys with one another. And caring is not just the job of the pastor or the leaders. The verse says, care the same for each other. And that means every single one of us in church has a responsibility to care. I don't know if you and I walked in here, did we feel that we walked in here with a responsibility? or a duty to care for one another. Well, if you're not sure what your purpose is in church, just begin by caring for one another. How would you care for yourself? What would you, what would you love to do for yourself? Could you do that for someone else? So at the, day, at the end of the day, church is amazing because it's the body of Christ. It's got many wonderful parts like you, wonderful people here, but we're all one body. So praise God for making us belong to his body, for wanting us. And let's care for others so that they can feel that they belong to. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Janai. If you all don't know, we are here to celebrate each other today. Amen? To celebrate church and that which we are building together. Just turn to your person on the left and right right now and say, God wants you here. Yes, now turn behind you and say, God wants you here. Okay? Tuhan mahu kamu di sini pagi ini. So, if you don't know, we have the Chinese group over there. So, translation is going on at the same time. The Bahasa group is over there. Translation is going on at the same time. We have some people from our Pakistani service also here. But um, uh, some of them are not well, so they didn't, didn't come today. But we are celebrating the diversity we have in NCC. And all of us matter to God. Amen? So you can see that we have our handout here, so do get your hands on it. And the verses are all translated uh, in three languages, okay? So you all can take this back as a bit of a souvenir. We now have Siawan who has our next passage and a little bit of a reflection from Huilin after that. I will be reading from Acts 2, 42 to 47. Uh, from the English Standard Version, the fellowship of the believers. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. 
and awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostle. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and baking, breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Hi, good morning, church. God has given us the church, a community to do life with. I realize that it's not a two-hour routine every week, like going for tuition or a meeting, but a week-long effort means seven days a week to keep one another in our faith and to be witness to the people around us. A question for ourselves here is that how can we find ways to be in each other's life daily, incorporating the word prayer, even food, and meaningful relationship. God promises to meet our every need. Whether we are teenagers, adults, or even babies, um, we have many needs. Um, he used, and many times, he used another believer to meet our needs. It's a blessing to have a community to share our joy with, like what Jinai has shared, and also to walk with us through our difficult moments. As 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 says, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. I wonder, do we attend connect groups and take effort to find out each other's needs? Another question for all of us. How do you think God added people in their church? When we love God and one another so intentionally, people will be attracted to come to God because expressing love for God and one another is everyone's responsibility. I'm really grateful to be supported by church family, especially when Ben and I became parents. It's one of the toughest things I've done and still doing. <laughs> Um, life will be so different without NCC support. And being a connect group leader, it challenges me to step out from my introvert self to reach out and care, even sending WhatsApp messages. <laughs> it can be very scary um, when you receive silence. <laughs> um, but I'm, a I'm reminded that I'm receiver of God's grace, so I should be extending His grace to others too. Last question for ourselves is that what is one way you can express your love and for God and people more intentionally this year? Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you to all who have shared. Um, I think it's very special to have different one of us come up here. Pastor, of course, sends his regards. You will see a little bit of him soon. <laughs> okay, but I think the, the, what we are trying to tell you here is church is more than one or two people. Church is everyone here. Church is more than just the building. Church is all of us here. This morning, you see that everyone who has shared eventually took a brick and put it on the wall. This is not like Taipusam where they break coconuts, okay? That's, that's not part of our ritual, <laughs> okay? This is not, oh, this is a new ritual. Huh? Every day must come put one coconut, next day, oh, one, one brick. No, the point of this is to show that we all have a part in doing this. We all have a part in building up the church. Amen, everyone? And, you know, you get a... 
different a variety of styles, as you can see in the presentation just now, and you will see soon. We are all very different, you know. We all have very different backgrounds. You know, sometimes I, we go for our committee meetings and I laugh because somebody cracks a joke, nobody laughs one. <laughs> because they come from different backgrounds. Somebody cracks another joke, wah, everybody gets together. And, and you know, that really inspires me because it reminds me of the diversity we have in Christ. And in that diversity, we want to be united. But where does it all start? Yeah, when does it all start this morning? And it starts with Jesus. It starts with us taking that first step. Don't even think about church yet. It all starts with us, each individual here, whether you're in the Bahasa group, who's having translation right now, the Chinese group, we have our Pakistani group. It all starts with us finding that first step and having that first relationship and move with Jesus. That's why over the past few weeks, our anchor verse has been 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. If you have your Bibles, just turn. I didn't ask them to put it on the slides. I want you to have a look at the, your Bibles. It says this, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. When we have a relationship with Jesus, we get and come into a new birth. That's where that whole idea of born again comes from. You know, are you born again? You know, if you are not in church circles, you think this guy is a bit nuts, isn't it? What do you mean born again? I'm only born once. Lah. How am I going to go back into my... Anyway, this same question was asked by people who talk to Jesus, you know. How am I going to go back into my mother's womb and come back again? But actually, the, the difference is this. It's more of a mental and, in a, in a way, a spiritual and physical born again through the power of the Holy Spirit. So when we believe in Jesus... He gives us new birth. And that new birth actually comes from the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. But just as a baby is born into life, you know, mothers, you know, you will give birth to the child and they lift it up and say, it's a boy or it's a girl, you know. And that child is born into this earth, starts breathing the air, starts eating milk, drinking milk, eating solid food, starts growing up, becomes a teenager, becomes an adult, and starts participating and being an influence in this world. That's what human beings are born into. But when we believe in Jesus Christ, we are now given a new birth into a living hope. Do you see the parallels? A human being is born into this world. They start eating, drinking, and, and making an impact. We, as we believe in Jesus, we are already human beings. We are now coming into a living hope. That's where it starts. When we have that new birth, we are giving a living hope that now we can live powerful lives. That now we can live lives which make a difference. Our spiritual journey begins then. And this living hope actually requires of us a change in our lifestyle. And that's where I'm going to lead you and, and how this all ties up to church and all that. I'm going to just try to connect the dots for you. When we believe in Jesus, we come out, we have a living hope. We now have to then say, okay, Lord Jesus, I have a living hope already. What next? Well, the Bible tells us as we continue reading in the few verses after that in verse 13 and 14. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 13 and 14 tells us what is next after getting that living hope. It says this, Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at His coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as He who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy because I am. Am holy. With that living hope, it must then partner with and come with a desire to live a different life. 
to have a new lifestyle. It says here, and what is the characteristic of that lifestyle? Holiness. Holiness. A lifestyle where we, we put away our evil desires. Because last time we don't know. Now we have this, you know, we are alert and fully sober. It says there, so be holy in all you do. Because God is holy. You see, when we have that living hope, it moves us then. What next? Okay, I have the heaven low hope already. I now want to live a holy life. But it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. I remember very clearly my own father. Okay, he basically lived a life without knowing Jesus. But when he was in his uh, 60s, all right, he eventually passed away from cancer or at least complications related to cancer. But when he was in his 60s, he discovered Christ. Okay, and I know I, I had the privilege of actually sharing with him about Jesus because we would travel in the car. He would pick me up from school. I was form five at a time. And every time coming back, I would pray for him just in my own heart. And there were times I would get to share about my own belief in Jesus. And he knew some idea about Jesus, but one day I think it must have clicked for him because he started coming to church he, and he started changing. I could see a change in his life. He had experience, he had an idea of what living hope was, but through the power of the Holy Spirit, he started changing. And one of the things he started changing first was he started swearing, stopping swearing while he was driving. Okay, wow, well, I tell you, when he was driving, oh, the words would come out of his mouth and some driver cut into his lane. Okay, some of you are smiling because, hey, actually, I still swear, huh? right? <laughs> okay, but he, I, I realized, hey, he doesn't do that anymore. I wonder what's going on. Then I realized he discovered Jesus in his life. And, and sometimes I would wake up in the morning and in the morning he would be sitting before me at the table reading his Bible. There was an amazing testimony of how he realized that he has this living hope and that living hope must now change his life. It must change his lifestyle. And he started going to church. And this is often what we don't teach enough of. The living hope which gives us a new lifestyle and we want to be holy, we want to stop doing certain things, we want to change in certain areas to be better. But one thing we sometimes don't emphasize enough is that that new lifestyle involves us having a new community. And the community is called the church. It's not the building which is important, but it's us together, a group of people which is important. And where do I say this? It's not me just because I'm a pastor here. Okay, I want to encourage everybody to come to church. That's not me, but we get our conviction from God's word in 1 Peter chapter 2. So it goes on, right? Tells us a living hope, a new lifestyle. And now in 1, chapter, 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 4 to 7, it says this, which is what we're going to read later. As you come to him... The living stone rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to Him. You also like living stones, that's all of us here, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You see, with this new lifestyle... It must be part of our lifestyle to be in this community where, what does it say we are doing? We are being built into a spiritual house. Look at some of these key, key words here. We are talking about living stones. This is a dead stone, okay? But take it as us, living, got feet, can grow feet, like the hands can start talking, okay? These living stones are, what's the next key word there? It is being built. So it is a picture of us coming together, working with one another, building this wall so that it, there's an end objective. And God's end objective for all of us, as each one of us put our hands to build the wall, is to have a spiritual house. And in the Bible, spiritual houses like this have always been used to impact the world around us. Either from outside people not knowing Christ, coming in to know Christ, or from us going out to make a difference that others may know Jesus. 
So God, in His amazing wisdom, wants to use all of us to build this spiritual house known as the church so that we can then achieve His objectives in the world, which is to bring His righteousness to people, to, to bring love where there is hate, to bring peace where there is war. And we should take heart that He wants to use each and every one of us here you know, some of us think, what can he do with us? Lah? You know, like I'm just a plain old brick. Don't even have color. <laughs> but it makes a difference because God can take that brick and make a difference as long as you don't run away when he wants to catch you. <laughs> okay? Or give all kinds of ideas. No, 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 I'm not, I, I can't fit in here. No, that's not me. <laughs> even if you have a little bit to give we can still build the wall. Amen? That's why these two banners are up here. That's why we, we come together this morning and all this translation okay, have been, has been done. Because we all work together. These two banners actually tell us, I mean, there's nothing religious about it. This is our mission and that's our vision. Have you ever figured out what's the difference? Besides the spelling. <laughs> the vision is what we want to see happen in the long term. Okay? Building an amazing church. We're going to read that together in a short while. Don't worry. Building an amazing church that impacts all people. So the vision we get. Ah, a vision. Wow. wow you know that, that vision? Okay? The vision we get is this church is going to be amazing. You know, we're going to be loving one another, caring for one another. People with different gifts, skill sets will come and just support one another. We can find joy, we can find peace when we come together and worship and pray in our connect groups. Okay, we can go hiking together, do all kinds of fun stuff together, come for our family day, 12 February, don't forget, under 8.30 a.m., not here, okay? <laughs> Very important, all right? And we can do all these things together, and that's an amazing church, but not just an amazing church. Because if you don't have the second two last lines, which is impacts all people, you become Rotary Club or Lions Club. The difference is this. Okay, I'm not saying they don't now, okay? <laughs> but I'm just trying to pull, pull a point here that the church is not just about us huddling together, getting to know one another and having fun together. We have a bigger picture objective, which is that we need to impact all people because God wants to do that. So that's the vision. That's what we see when we want to see happening in our church, how do we get there? There's this. That's the mission. We get to the vision through our mission. Every day, we want to live like Jesus and share His love. And as we do that, whether it's with one another, whether it's with our friends, family members, loved ones, we will eventually start building an amazing church that impacts all people. And when we say all, we mean all. Right? As you can see, there are many nationalities represented here to a certain extent. I think if you invite everybody else, he'll be even more. Okay, we get some people from dignity as well. There's even more nationalities. That's why we've got a few languages here. So I want to encourage you right now. Let's just read our church vision and mission in the four different languages, okay? <laughs> Alright, let's start. If you can read, read lah, okay? If you don't know Urdu or, you know, Chinese, just uh, mumble. <laughs> okay, let's read it in English, our church vision. It's here, okay? Ready? Everyone, let's start. Building an amazing church that impacts all people. Let's read our church mission in English. Living like Jesus, sharing His love. Amen. Let's read it in BM together with them. I think most of us can do that. Ready? Let's go. Membina gereja yang menakjubkan, yang memberi kesan kepada semua orang. Then our church mission. Hidup seperti Yesus berkongsi kasihnya. Amen. Now here's the issue. I can't read the Chinese part. <laughs> okay, I have Chinese, but the English part not so good. I mean the Mandarin part. So maybe can I just ask if... Um, Adam is there. Okay, Adam can come with. Okay, he's, he's translating. Okay. <laughs> Sophia, you can just read this. And everybody who can read in Chinese, just read it along. Ready? 
，要建造一个。要建造一个以人为本、关心照顾人群的教会 （Church Mission）， 活出基督，分享他爱。Thank you very much. <coughs> And we also have the Urdu version there for us. So this is our church mission and vision. And actually, it influences everything we do. If eventually we get it into our DNA, that means we get it into our lives and we think about it. It will make a difference in your life in every area, from your personal life, from your family life, from your public life. It's going to make a difference. And what you get there is, like I, I, I mentioned, we started off with having the living hope. Requires us to have a change in lifestyle, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, He helps us to have a holy life. And eventually, that life will include us being part of a bigger community. So Ben will come up here and share with us right now how this vision and mission actually has impacted his his life and his family there. Yeah? <laughs> so Pastor Fu Seng has uh, mentioned just now about how we need to have a new lifestyle of holiness, and we've read the church vision and the church mission. So what I'm going to do basically is just uh, to answer the question: What does the church vision and mission look like in our personal lives, as we um, think about how we are going to accomplish the mission, living like Jesus? Sharing his love, so that we can build an amazing church. And I think、um, there are three things really that we can do. And these three things are not just my thoughts, obviously, but it's actually from Acts、uh, chapter two, verse forty-two that we've read earlier. Okay. So the first thing, how we can,、um, how the how the church vision and mission will look like in our personal life is living like Jesus means developing the spiritual discipline to study the Bible. Um, you know, reading the gospel, it's clear to us that Jesus knew the scripture inside out. He was quoting scripture when he was tempted against、um, uh, the Satan, and then he was quoting scripture in his、uh, teachings and all that. So it's clear that Jesus knew the scripture inside out. And if we are to live like Jesus, it's, I think it's obvious that we need to spend time studying his word as well. And I'm reminded by Pastor.、Um, he mentioned this before that you know all of us we have different responsibilities in life, and we are all at different stage in our walk with God. And so, that spiritual discipline of studying God's word will look differently for each of us. I know. I remember him saying, "If you can read one chapter a day, God bless you. If you can read ten chapters a day, God bless you." But not all of us can do ten chapters a day, right? So the important thing is that not so much the extent in which this spiritual discipline is、uh, done, but the important thing is that it is done. All right. So the second way how、um, we could live like Jesus is living like Jesus means. Committing to be part of a fellowship of believers.、Um, just going to share a simple story here. I remember, I became a believer actually when I was a teenager. I think I was 15 years old that time. And I'm not sure how many of you can relate with this. I, I was born in the 90s、uh, and didn't have Astro back then. So growing up on Sunday morning, seven o'clock in the morning until one o'clock in the morning, that's the time when I would spend the whole morning watching cartoons. It's like the best thing of the week, right? You go to Monday to Friday, you go to school, and Saturday maybe there's school sometimes. But Sunday, religiously, I would wake up seven o'clock to watch cartoons and animation. Then I became a believer, <laughs> and that means we have to gather on Sunday morning. So I kind of like had to, oh my God, have to make a, a decision then, right? Like,、um, do I, God, how、uh, do I come to church on Sunday mornings or do I stay back and watch cartoons? As a teenager, that was a big thing. Okay, right now looking back, it's a bit silly. But I suppose a question for us would be, or a question for you and I today would be,、um, what what's the decision that you are making to choose to be part of a community? For you, it could mean committing to be part of a connect group.、Um, it could mean committing to attend Sunday celebrations.、Um, it could mean committing to、uh, attend prayer meetings. And those three things are things that、uh, Huilin and I we have committed to. You know, we are here every Sunday. Um, only when there's like really、uh, extraordinary circumstance, you might find that we are not here on Sunday or we are not here for Connect Group. But、uh, generally, we've committed to be part of all this because why we want to be part of church fellowship because we are part of the body and we want to contribute to building the body. 
Third thing, living like Jesus means committing to private prayer. Uh, in the context of building an amazing church, I think the importance of private prayer here is the fact that uh, it shapes my heart and it shapes my thoughts. Um, we of, we of course, we know the power we have in prayer, but this is a part I think that's really important in the context of building an amazing church that impacts all people because you know, if we are good parts of the body, then we'll build a good body. Um, and the reason why I thought about this is because often it's in those private moments of prayer when I'm just alone and I'm praying, and it's just between me and God, and there's nobody there to listen to my prayer, nobody there to judge what I say. Um, in those moments where I can be really unfiltered with my thoughts, those are the times where when I'm praying for someone or praying for something, and then I'm maybe I'm like critical about that person or that situation, I find myself, um, I find God nudging me with his you know, gentle hand of grace and love saying, uh, maybe you shouldn't think like that about that person, or maybe, hey, you, shouldn't, you should reevaluate that situation this way or that way. And that shapes me to be a better person, right? And so that is how I think we can all contribute to building an amazing church, and that's how myself and Huilin, we are um, contributing to building an amazing church here in NCC that impacts all people by committing to the word and allowing it to shape our minds um, by committing to fellowship and creating a loving and encouraging environment. We try very hard to do that with a young adults group and by committing to private prayer and allowing it to shape our hearts. Thank you, Ben. So Ben has a, a young family, right? And together with Hui Lin, they lead the young adults in their homes. Right, so I think uh, he can testify right now like what he did. It's been an amazing journey, a very fulfilling, tiring at times, no doubt, but yet amazing. Okay, so Adam also now will share with us on how the church vision and mission makes a difference to his family life. Thank you, Fuseng. I have to walk very fast and talk very slow. Because my note is very short, but believe me, it's very deep. <laughs> okay, okay. <clears throat> so to me, the vision and mission of building a church uh, that impact everyone and living like Jesus while sharing his love, um, it translates to our family life. I would say it's like a journey, you know. This is a journey that I need to be part of the process and ultimately to create a strong, supportive community within our home or within ourselves. I find that this gives me a lot of peace and assurance when I come in, I know that you support me, you know, okay. So I will treat it as a journey for this work, uh, mission and vision. In our family life, I would can say that um, we try or we wanted or we try everywhere to show Jesus' love by being his hand and feet to fit in. You know, sometimes we have differences, but ultimately uh, it's Jesus' love that uh, uh, our main motivations. So this involves, um, we have to making a differences or different in other people's life around us, okay? Or through serving in a community or just uh, sharing or spreading kindness and love whenever we go and whatever we do. This is very simple that I can think of. And then I would say that this mission and vision is not what about we do, it's who we are. Living like Jesus means embodying his value of life, value of love, forgiveness, and compassion in everything we do. It means that seeking to understand and love each other, especially when it's difficult. So I think uh, this is not easy, but because of the power of God, I think we can manage and we can go through. You know. <clears throat> So to put this in actions in our family life, I will start saying that be intentionally okay, to building our relationship because we have a lot of hindrances and roadblocks 
when we connect to each other. Okay, sometimes I make phone call to someone, it might not at the right time, but don't give up. We just try a little bit here to get connect to each other. I think um, at last, <coughs> um, we can also to serve as a family, okay, in the family and to be part of the serving team. Okay, I, I really thank you that your, your participant and your serving really encouraged me. I see how Lolita, you know, day in, that means that week in, week out, to handle all the children, you know. I think for some of us, when talk about handling one children, you have already have, wow, if you handle all the children, it's not easy. But this really encouraged me, you know. And lastly, by doing this, I hope uh, God's love can manifest to what we do and what we connect together. And the world will see. Then we automatically become the light in the world. Okay? So this is my view that this vision and mission as our family, how we participate to building that together. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Adam. So there we have it. <laughs> um, each one of us have our own gifts, skill set, but we come together with the church vision in mind and the church mission, how we live like Jesus and share his love. I mean, <clears throat> it's important to know that we all have our part, right? And we all can build this wall. And there are certain things which we know we, we shouldn't do. Lah. <laughs> right? There are certain things we know how not to build a wall. For example, if this was a living brick, a living stone, and somebody wants to pick you up, okay, don't go and say, oh, I don't want to be picked up. <laughs> Right? Or don't say, um, actually, I'm not of the right shape and size. Lah. Maybe I won't come and, and join you guys. Or I've got this brick here. Hey, I prefer to hang out with the other red bricks. And um, I'm not, I've got other things to do. There are some of the things we, we can say and how not to build a wall. But for us, as we build a wall together, there are many opportunities for us. Right, let's start with our connect groups. Okay? So, you know, we meet twice a month all right, in different people's homes. Think of how you can make uh, the effort to come for that. I know some of you live quite far away and it's okay to tell the connect leader, hey, can we actually meet somewhere else where it's a bit easier or you know, not so far or you know, we don't have to go too much traffic. I think we can work around things. We're quite flexible, you know, we're not that set in stone, <laughs> right? Or, you know, there are service opportunities abounding in this church, you know, whether it's with the ushers, all right, you just stand there, you know, it's a very important thing they do, okay, to actually make sure people are, are, are comfortable, make sure people know where to go, what to, to actually to do as they come in here. The PA team, the worship team, if you can play some musical instruments. All right. Adam sets up the cafe every week. Today, no food, by the way. And, okay, and you can volunteer your time there. You know, I'm looking for people to help me run the family camp, which is coming up in June. All right, so feel free to volunteer. And, you know, we are very flexible with these things. Okay, of course, we, we demand that you try your best and, and you work hard at it. But, you know, if you've got things, we can always talk it through. Amen, everyone? So, at the end of the day, we are living stones because we are also called by Jesus to be salt and light. If you look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 15, it says this, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled Underfoot, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot 
be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Let's put our hands to the plow. Let's put our hands and build this church together. Amen? Can I have the musicians up? We're going to come to our time now as we celebrate one another, as we celebrate this church of NCC, we're going to have our communion time together. But before that, yeah, just as the musicians get ready, we have quite a special message. Okay, let's pause that and get the get it rightfully cued, get the sound ready. Okay, let's start again. Ready? Good morning, dear church family. I am certain you had an amazing time of prayer, of worship, and enjoying this amazing team speaking to you today about what church is. Having said that, what is church? What is NCC? Well, let me start with this. Church is not. NCC is not building or a Sunday service. What is it then? Well, it's not a Sunday service that I go to. It's not a building that I
challenging all of us. Take one person that we are going to believe God for. Put their names down. We're going to pray. We're going to fast. We're going to reach out, have purposeful relationships, conversations with them. And we want to see them added to our family this year. And as we see reforms of our faith, of our hearts and our lives. Dear church, you matter to God. You matter to me. Love you. Look forward to a great time together this 2023 as we build the spiritual family. God bless you. Love you. Take care. Good morning. I'm just going to read uh, a verse from 1 Peter 2, 4 to 7. As you come to him, the living stone rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Now, to you who believe, this stone is precious, but to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. Thank you. Amen. Amen. It all begins with Jesus. You know, even if we take this illustration of the brick wall which we are trying to build, what do you think actually is the most important here? The bricks are important. The effort put in are important. But actually the most important is the foundation upon which these bricks stand upon. And that was one of our considerations when you say, oh, bring bricks in. Okay, how many? Should I bring 50? Should I bring 100? No. It all depends on the foundation. And what is more important is that when we're doing all this together, the foundation is Jesus. Amen. We're doing it because of Jesus and what He's done. He's our corner stone. That means He's the stone upon which all the other bricks start fitting in from. If that stone is not there, you end up getting all kinds of weird walls. But He's our corner stone. Yeah, we're going to come to a time of communion now. I want to encourage all of you just to stand right now. We remember through the emblems of the bread and the wine what Jesus Christ, our cornerstone, has done for us. It tells us that the living hope that we have comes after the new birth. But the new birth has been brought and bought with a price, which is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross and it didn't end there it continued with his resurrection three days later and that's what gives us that new hope that's what gives us the Holy Spirit who can then motivate us and strengthen us to live a holier and better life together as a community and as we come before this you just want to distribute it We see the bread. And this is the emblem of the body of Jesus broken on the cross for us. Then we look at the symbol of the wine here and we remember that it is His blood spilled for us on the cross that we now have this life. Amen. Come. 
Let's start by taking the bread together. You can open it already. This is the emblem of the body of Christ. We are still distributing it. So let's just hang on first while everybody gets the emblem. I want to just encourage all of you, if you do not consider yourself a follower of Jesus or you do not believe in Jesus, just refrain from this taking this because this is a special emblem for followers of Christ for those who have given their lives to him amen so this is the the bread the wafer here signifies his body broken on the cross for us let's take it together and then we open the, the symbol of the wine This symbol of the wine here represents the blood of Christ poured out for our sins. Let's partake it together. Amen. Amen. Father, I just want to thank you for the gift of your Son that as we come and we talk about the church, we talk about building the wall, we talk about our mission and our vision, we know all of that is pointless if it is not for your love, Jesus. If it is not built on the foundation of our true cornerstone, Jesus. We give you glory and praise. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage you right now as we take the weeks coming together family day coming up next week remember it's not here okay uh, more information will be sent out on the mature and multiply chat where you can sign up and you can sign up your friends as well after that pastor starts his new sermon series but i want to encourage you as we move into the rest of the year together we build better together i've just got up a prayer of dedication of commitment and you know what I want to encourage you? Let's say this together. Let's pray this out together. Right at the end. Okay. All right, ready? Let's read this all together. This is our commitment of dedication. Let's, let's do this together. Amen, everyone. Our Father, thank you that you make all things new. Thank you for all you've allowed into our lives these past two years, the good and the hard stuff, celebrations and brokenness, which reminded us that we need you and to rely on your presence every day. You are always with us, surrounding us with favour as with a shield, and we are safe in your care. Holy Spirit, lead us in each step of 2023. Guide our decisions and turn our hearts to desire you above all else. Open doors that need to be opened and close the ones we should not go through. Please give us the courage to let go of the things that do not draw us closer to you or to the destiny that you have prepared for us that we would live in the unity of your spirit in all that we do, putting aside differences and arguments that do not build the church nor our lives. Give us your wisdom, strength and power, making us strong and courageous for the days ahead. Deliver us from evil, even as you keep us from snares and traps. We want to honour you by how we live our lives. Others would be drawn to you. We pray that you'd keep us far from the snares and traps of temptations. 
Father, we pray for your protection over our families, friends, NCC and Dignity. We ask for your hand to cover us and keep us from the enemy's evil intent, that you would be a shield surrounding us, safe in your hands. Give us discernment and insight to understand your will, hear your voice and know your ways. Father, we admit that moving in a new direction opposite our comfort is hard. We need your strength, wisdom and confidence, empowering us to step out in faith. As the new year begins, we look to you for our hope, joy and peace. Give us the courage to be obedient to you. May we make a difference in this world for your glory and purposes as we reflect your peace and hope to a world that desperately needs your presence, love, grace and healing. Amen. Amen. Worship team. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that I will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three. Let's read our, the Lord's Prayer as we end this time. Our Father in heaven, help us to honour your name. Come and set up your kingdom so that everyone on earth will obey you as you are obeyed in heaven. Give us our food for today. Forgive us for doing wrong as we forgive others. Keep us from being tempted and protect us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let me pray for all of you. And now may the God of peace who raised from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour, by whose blood we have God's everlasting covenant, also equip you with all that you need to do His will in every good work. God working in you what is pleasing to Him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. And church, we say, Amen. God bless you. Have a great day ahead. Have an amazing week. Connect with us at any time. Amen. Fight for
you sing, enemies flee. When you sing, prison walls come falling down. When you sing, heaven invades the earth. So just begin to lift up your hallelujah. Raise it like a banner.